You know, so I'm an, I, I, I work in a lot of fields, but I would also consider myself an astrobiologist, right, which is a pretty kind of wild idea that you can do astrobiology, even though you only have one example, which is the Earth. But we've learned so much that now we can start asking ourselves about the possibility of life elsewhere. So finding even a microbe, like even a freaking, you know, amoeba on Mars would be, or mm. even evidence that there used to be amoebas on and Mars. What is the evidence that they've discovered on Mars? What they found was um, organic chemistry, right? And so, but organic chemistry, man, I hated chemistry when I was growing up, uh, and I hated organic chem, was that's just basically chemistry involving carbon, you know, so you can have non or, you know, it does, organic chemistry doesn't mean organisms, but it's the mm -hmm. kind of chemistry that organisms love. Right. So finding evidence that there was like they drilled. Amazing. Like we sent a freaking robot to yeah. Mars that could drill through a rock, you know, and then ingest <laughs> the rock. And, you know, it's like, and then send the data back and across data space. Back, man. We're, you know, pretty good for a bunch of hairless apes. You know? Yeah. Um, so what, what they found was evidence for you know, fairly complex um, uh, you know, uh, organic chemistry, which meant that way back when Mars, and this we know for sure, right? Mars had water on it. We know that for sure now. Mars was a blue planet for Did they least think that Mars was hit by uh, an asteroid or a comet or something along those lines? Well, everything got hit by comets. That's how we have, you know, we have chunks of Mars here, right? right. That, you know, the thing in 96 or whatever, when they were like, oh, we found life on Mars. You know, they thought that what they found was a uh, fossil bacteria mm -hmm. in a chunk of Mars that they found in Antarctica. So the planets have been swapping spit for like the entire history history of the solar system. That's fossilized bacteria that they found. Has that been confirmed? No, no. Most people now think that the uh, Allen Hills uh, meteorite, that probably, you know, it's inconclusive and it's not conclusive enough to be like, yeah, we found life. It's like a tiny little squiggly worm looking That's thing. That's what right? it was, yeah. yeah. But it was so small that it was like way smaller than any of the microscopic fossilized bacteria we've ever seen before. So people in general are like, nah. Um, but by fine, but that's what started, right? That's when um, Clinton was like, okay, we're going to send a lot of shit to Mars. Because after, when, you know, back in 90, you know, early 90s, people were kind of done with Mars. And so that's what triggered the whole, you know, one space probe after another, the rovers. And like, so, you know, the thing we found was a direct result of that effort, which was this organic chemistry, which says that back in the day, Mars had had a lot of this stuff lying around, had a lot of these, you know, these, these organic chemicals lying around, which if your life, that's what you're going to be using. So that's like one more step. Like we've been putting the, the, the Lego blocks uh, for the argument for life on Mars one piece at a time since the, you know, since the first rovers went there. Yeah, um, if we did discover just even plants on some other planet, even just oh. a, a planet with some sort of plant-like life. Yeah, that would be... That'd be a game changer. That'd be a game changer. Because you know, so, right now we don't know if there's... We, you know, are we the only time in the entire history of the universe that like this crazy thing where you got, we went from non-life to life. Like, is that common or is that never, ever, ever happen? So that's the question we want to, you know, we want to answer. And I, you know, I mean, like, you know, that argument I was given before is I think from the probable arguments, I'm saying it's like, you know, it's, it's almost overwhelming that, yeah, it probably happened somewhere. Again, doesn't mean anything's here, but we need evidence, right? Science. So we got to build that evidence. Yeah. And if we do find something, the, 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 one of the weirder things would be if we found something and there was a way to get there. Yeah. You know, yeah. we, we find something and we're like, yeah, we find something, but it's we're pretty sure there's some kind of life and it's three billion light years away. You're like, well, that's cool. Yeah. What do we do? Yeah. yeah it's nice yeah. to know that we're not the only ones. Yeah. yeah. And, well, you know, it's interesting. Like, how much would that that change? You know, even if we found like evidence for this, this is a debate. Like if we found evidence of a technological civilization, we saw like alien megastructures like that star they thought. Yeah. About. What was that nonsense? Uh, and it wasn't really nonsense. It was, I, you it know, was something it was, floating around. Right? Well, so here's what they saw. So that, you know, the way we discussed discover planets is we look for when the, the planet passes in front of the star, you get a little dip in the light, right? It blocks out a little bit of light. Right. It's like a little eclipse. Um, and so, you know, we've now, that's how we know that every star in the sky has planets. But there's like, they found one that just made no sense. Like the light would dip, then it would stop dipping, then it would dip again three times, and it would stop dipping. Sometimes it was lower, sometimes it was higher. Um, and, you know, for a year or so, people were like, Fuck is this, right. you know? And so, you know, um, uh, Jason Wright and others, uh, Jason's a friend of mine, you know, they wrote a paper where they were like, hey, you know, at least, because this is what the future is going to look like. We can't say, we can't, we have to at least consider the possibility that these are artificial structures that are like orbiting the star or, you know. It would have so. to be ungodly huge ungodly huge alien mega structures like yeah. that's the best word like, ever like the size know? of a country right yeah yeah these things would be huge right but that's what people think like you know when people think about advanced alien civilizations the idea of building large scale structures 
is you think that may be the next thing you do once you reach a certain point, like um, you know the Dyson sphere, the idea that you could collect all of the sun's energy and use it for yourself by building a giant sphere around the sun with solar panels on the inside. People think like that goes back to Kardashev's, the idea of this Kardashev scale back in the 60s, where he's like, look, there's going to be a natural progression of civilizations that goes first, you collect all the energy you can from your planet, and then you use that to do amazing things. And then you collect all the energy from your star, and then you do that, you, may, you know, you do amazing shit with that. And then, you know, the whole galaxy. So, he, you know, Kardashev thought there was a scale that, that civilizations naturally progress through. And so, you hopefully don't blow yourself up along the way. Well, I think that's the question. I mean, you know, I've criticized the, the Kardashev scale in one of the papers I recently did because what it fails to take into account is the fact that, like, you know, on your way up to the type one, type one is when you harvest all the energy from your planet, which basically means somehow covering your planet in, in uh, uh, you know, solar panels or something. That neglects what we've learned since Kardashev wrote his paper in 64 is that, you know, planets don't like that shit. Like, planets, the planets going to feed back. You try and build, mm. you know, massive shit on your planet. The planet has its own, you know, biosphere is pretty powerful and you got to take the biosphere into account or you get climate change. You get, you know, the, the planet being pushed off in another direction. So, but whatever. So for the, um, for the alien mega structures, people thought like, oh, maybe this is like a piece of a, uh, of a Dyson sphere, right? This is like, mm. you know, now, so, you know, when he proposed this, people went bonkers over this, right? He was yeah. just saying, he's like, look, here's the 15 different things could be. And I'm going to have to at least consider the possibility that it's artificial. Um, but for me, and some people got really angry and everything, but I thought like this is – Why did they get angry? Because there's been a thing in the community over the years. You know, SETI got a bad name, right? SETI mm -hmm. for a bunch of you – know, SETI was sort of thought as being like, oh, only wackadoodles do that. And, but why, you know, why is that? Just because there was no results? Uh, I just think, you know, there was – you know what it is? It's because of shitty TV. You know, I mean, I really, in some ways, right, it's all, you know, it's prosthetic foreheads, right? It's the whole, we've had so much kind of crappy, you know, speculation about aliens that trying to do anything scientific always had this whiff of sort of being a little, you know, and then there's the UFO stuff, you know, which is completely separate, has nothing to do with it. But so, SETI never really achieved any results, right? There was that one big blip that was highly popularized. Oh, wow signal. Yeah. yeah. But here's the thing about SETI, we never really did SETI that much. You know what I mean? Like people have this idea like... Like, wow, we've got telescopes all over the no. world and they're looking, you know, so the government never funded a SETI study, a, anything major, right? So people, you know, the, all that SETI has done is like basically, you know, some dudes on a telescope get a little extra time. Like, hey, man, look quick, let's go look at a star, right. you know? So um, Jill Tarter, who's one of the, you know, the founders, one of the gr greats of SETI, she compares it. It's like, you know, we got an ocean that we need to look at. And we, so far we've looked at a thimble. Right? Was she the Jodie Foster character? She's the Jodie Foster character. Yeah, we're in the head. In contact. Yeah. 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 So she's, you know, and it's a good point. Like, we haven't really looked yet. So the idea yeah. that, you know, the stars are silent or anything, it's like, man, come on. We haven't even begun to do that, a comprehensive survey. 